thought we should, you know, just kind of get back to the roots. Yeah, to our roots. I have Austin Stone worship playing in my background, but now I feel real lame. Now I feel real lame. Hey, Na- Na- Naeem, um, so obviously, Naeem, you and I, we look similar, but we're actually from two different countries. I'm yeah. Indian, you're Pakistani, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and in my post, man, that I posted about Amos 1, I was, I was so uh, intrigued that Amos is a Southerner who needs to go to the North. Man, would you unpack a little bit what it's like for you when you read a passage of scripture that calls a person to go to a place that is so un- yeah, yeah. uncomfortable? Like, like, what does that mean for you who's actually had to live that kind of, right? Right, right, yeah, yeah. So my background, like you said, like I'm Pakistani. Uh, let's see if I can come closer here. Yeah, but I'm Pakistani, grew up in, in um, born and raised in Kuwait, and then uh, started church in the South. Um, and um, yeah, man, I was at a church, it was a great church, awesome church, um, in, uh, in Charleston, South Carolina, Seacoast Church, and then really felt called to leave and start a diverse community and reach a more d- uh, different people group, you know? But what I did not realize is that I was still, I was still Pakistani. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. And this was like 13 years ago, and it was like in the height of like terrorist them was like the topic of the day, you know? And so, man, it was not, you know, it was fresh out of 9-11. And so I just forget, you know, I think one of the things that is fascinating is as an immigrant, um, and especially when you uh, are trying to come and you're trying to kind of kind of just be a part of the of, 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 a, of a context, if you're, when you're trying to belong, you just forget sometimes that you're a, you're a minority until someone reminds you. Wow. And so um, I found myself going, oh, wow, this is very, very different. So... Uh, yeah, it's been quite the challenge of coming and um, reaching a people group that didn't were were never my people group. Is that, if that makes sense, you know. Yeah. But I think yeah. it comes with a different part. It just comes with a different sense of um, responsibility when God says, "Okay, I want you to have a bigger, bigger perspective on things." You know, where mm-hmm. you move from, you know, like this idea of the mind of Moses that you know, where he, he goes after his own people to the heart of Abraham that reaches. Uh, more as a father of many nations right you know? right so that, that's know, so we, good we can that's so that, good yeah. so so here here's the question that i have then for you as a pastor um and and you've got this issue of uh different people that come from different backgrounds and you have the church who is yeah. supposed to look and live a certain way um but in the midst of that you have what seems to be actions that are contrary to that and you mentioned kuwait um so you've lived uh, lived some of this what is it like for a person who looks like you who's had your background your experience like what does that tell us about the family of god in terms of that relationship like you know pastor us through that yeah i mean i think it's a I think it's 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 really um, I think it's really complicated. I think I think like as you were talking about Amos, I was reminded about like the 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 themes that run through Amos, right? Uh, complacency of people, uh, idolatry, and depression, uh, oppression of people. Wow. You know, those those are basically the main things, and and so I think the co- complacency um, is connected to uh, the church because. Uh, because I think people get complacent in terms of even their uh, ability to um, to want to relate to the other. So, like, um, you know, some people, uh, they talk about how people have biases and they don't choose to hang out with people who are not their own. It's not because they're, like, angry towards them. But, I mean, psycholo- uh, sociologists have actually said that they're actually just lazy, like cognitively lazy. Because it's wow. hard to have a conversation with someone that you have to kind of, learn to understand like have you have, you've noticed this right people yeah. like if you're you're speaking a different language people tend to be louder they're like all of a sudden the person's deaf like they're not deaf uh, but people are trying to what when you see that happen people are trying to they have not gotten used to relating to the other and i think that's what happens in the church if you live a church life if you live in a bubble in a, in a sense if you live in a, in a good christian household environment um community uh, uh the truth is the complacency will creep in there because you no longer know how to relate to the other and so when god says hey i want you to go here when he tells the prophets go here do this relate to this person understand this person you we don't even know what to do does that make sense dude like, keep going this yeah, is so good yeah uh, it, it's so i think 
I think what happens is, so when we want to move out of complacency, I think some people, what they do is, and I've seen people do this and I've, I've seen it do it in my life too, because I'm not like the, the king of relating to everybody, but I know that, um, uh, and you know this, right? I know how to relate. So people go, oh, you're just like me, even though mm-hmm. I'm not, you know? So complacency, when you come out of that, it starts with pity, I think. And pity is very different than compassion. See, pity says, you're not on my same level, but I'm going to do good for you. Wow. Um, and I think sometimes in the Christian world, that's where Christians start with and they stay there. Man. Compassion and empathy says, we're the same. And so I'm just like you. You are my brother. You are my sister. I'm going to, uh, 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 we're very different, but we're just the same. Like we're made in the image of Christ uh, versus I have Jesus and you don't. And so I feel Okay, you got to, you. You, dude, this is so, so important. And I have a feeling that as Amos is preaching to these people, um, I've got to, I've got, I've got to feel that there's the sense of Amos getting at like, like, where's your compassion? Yeah. As a people who have been saved from much, like, like y'all remember your story. You remember Egypt? <laughs> it's not yeah. that far back, right? Like, like you remember where the Lord has saved you from. So, t- so, but I think what you're getting at is so important because ultimately what you're saying, and I want you to unpack this more, is that as Christians, we have a response. We can respond in light of um, immediate situations and circumstances. So uh, the murder of George right. Floyd, um, the, um, the, I mean, just all, all this stuff. We can respond with pity, but then, or... We could say, no, the gospel actually has taught us and trained us that um, this is not somebody who's less than me. This is somebody right. who's equal to me as an image bearer. And so yeah. my biblical response is compassion. Right. So what right. are the dangers, Naeem, of pity, of living out a, a pity love versus a compassion love? Yeah, man, great question. And you know what? You actually see, you see the, the answer, the results in scripture. Have you noticed like, and you have, I'm sure, you notice like, the, the continually, there's writers of the scriptures, and it seems like God's continually have to remind people, stop idolizing, like stop Gosh. committing adultery, right? He keeps saying that. And you have to just stop and go, why is God always telling people to stop doing this? Because we think of idolatry as one of those things that, um, oh, well, it's out there and you have idols and maybe, you know, I mean, you and I can relate. Right? I grew up with Hindus and so idol worship, yeah, like, incense we're, we're burning so, in the closet, uh, all right. the idols in the closet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we're so far away from that. But idolatry, when you just break it down, is the worship of self. Wow. It's, it's you making the center. Like, like, so I, like, I will worship you because worshiping you get, satisfies my needs. So I will figure out whatever satisfies my needs. That becomes my idol. But the truth is, it's really about self. So idolatry, the problem with idolatry and, is that it's connected to self. So that's why I think like if you start with pity and you stay with pity to your question is that you start, you just stay with self. You're like, wow. uh, it's, it's, it's because of me. I'm just, you don't even want to say it, but you're like, you know how many people say, oh, it's not about me. It's not about me. What they're really saying is. It's about me. It's about me. It's really about me. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm not the center of the world, but I should be, you know. No, and I'm offended maybe. that you don't think I am. Naeem, I'm offended right now that you don't think that I'm the center of this but world. You are the center of something. <laughs> yeah, my sin. I'm the center of my sin. That's for, that's for sure. I mean. Hey, dude, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for this time. Um, I love you. You're my brother. Um, I, I'm so, so grateful for what you're doing. Uh, Naeem is pastor of Mosaic Church in Charlotte. Um, I was just with him last week uh, doing an interview. In fact, I just saw today, you guys posted um, yeah. the highlight kind of real. Check and then it out. I, I want y'all to check it out. Please go to the, the YouTube. And, and we talk for about 40 minutes. I mean, in, in, intensely about um, racism and systemic racism and injustice. And so I just want to point you to yeah. that. Brother, thank you. Love you. Yeah, I, I'll man. catch you on the flip side. Sushi's on you next time. No, it's not. <laughs> Uh, right, later, man. Hey, you know, and guys, uh, KJ is going to jump on in a second here. KJ is going to jump on. Um, but one of the things that um, I'm going to just suggest is the danger. The danger of pity is that if we respond in pity, the, the, the result will be momentary. 
if we respond in pity, the result will be momentary. But if we respond in compassion, it actually sets the foundation for a long term, um, for a long term life perspective, right? So pity, momentary, compassion, foundational that will uh, help us in the long run. All right, I'm gonna add KJ in here. I saw you for a second, then you bounced. There he is. Uh, KJ is the worship pastor at Transformation Church. Uh, he is one of my pastors. There he is. What's up, bro? Oh, my guy. What's How up, are man? You? How you doing? Hey, look at your glasses. We, hey, we did bro, not color coordinate. We didn't, bro. But it's look just, at that. Uh, you know, they say great minds, my brother. They say great minds. Hey, man, let me let me just uh, let me just speak on you for a little bit for uh, the people that may not know. Uh, KJ uh, is a Grammy Award winning artist, uh, but more than that, he's got his accolades or accolades on top of accolades. But I want y'all to know uh, that KJ is a pastor of pastors. Um, the way that he pastors the worship team, the way that he pastors me, I'm not even on the worship team. The way that he pastors our church uh, is evidence of a heart and a life that is so dedicated to Jesus. And so one of the things I love about KJ, what y'all may not know is that KJ, myself, and another friend, Jay Scott, who's another pastor at TC, we typically play basketball together. We can't right now because of COVID. Uh, but on the basketball court, uh, we have deep theological conversations. And I'll be saying stuff, KJ, at times, and you're like, whoa, 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 Joel, slow down. Whoa. And you've got such a brilliant way of taking um, complex theological ideas and simplifying them and saying, well, let's just get to the heart of the matter. And so, bro, I want to just give you time to just respond and react to um, Amos, Amos chapter one. Uh, yeah. and, and just from your heart as a pastor, like what if there was like one or two things that you would want people to leave with that is for yeah. formative for their hearts, what would that be? Um, well, first of all, man, thank you for um, thank you for those kind words, man. I'll give you that twenty dollars. Um, nah. um, I promise you. Um, well, Amos, it, it's really fun um, walking through this, and actually kind of difficult to be honest with you. Um, Amos is not um, super easy to understand um, initially, and I've always read through Amos, especially um, chapter five. Um, but it was really cool to kind of like walk through uh, chapter one a little bit. And there was one, there was one particular thing that kind of jumped out to me. Um, and I'm going to kind of cross reference um, another book that I've been reading um, um, because I felt like this was not, um, I, I definitely think that this was on purpose. And I want to talk a little bit about like the nature of God. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, I want to talk a little bit about nature of God, but you, you touched over this and you talked about um, around verse nine, where it says, I, I will not relent from punishing. Um, is it tire? Tear? Yep, tire. Tire, tire. Yeah. Tire. yeah. yeah. Uh, for three crimes, even four, because they handed over a whole community of exiles to eat them. And you talked about that um, earlier um, in whole community, but check this out and broke a treaty of brotherhood. Ooh, go. Um, therefore I will send fire against the walls, um, of Tyre. And so I think, I think like, I think what happens here, I think a lot of times it's like many times we, we, we sort of, uh, compartmentalize God into two different people. There's like an old Testament version that's kind of angry. Um, and then, there's yeah. a, and then there's a new Testament one that's like very happy and very just like open to everyone and grace and all of that stuff. It's like, like it's like we got a bipolar God, which is yeah, not true. I'm not saying yeah. that, but like, yeah, that's how we yeah, read, like, read the Testaments. Yes. He's like, you know, uh, this is, this is happy God. This is mad God. Um, an old Testament. And so, and, and so you actually see there that the prophet is, is the prophet is, um, Amos is speaking and saying that like, look, you had this treaty of brotherhood. And you broke this treaty of brotherhood. And so what happens there, I believe, is that God is saying that unity um, and brotherhood is a value to me. Mm. That, God, that God is saying that. And so as, as, and so what's even been really amazing, um, um, our pastor, um, Derwin Gray, has really been, you know, it's been amazing for me how he's pulled out um, the concepts, that, the, that these concepts aren't new concepts when we said, you know, when God gives uh, the commandment, it says, you know, in essence, like to love your neighbor um, as yourself, that when Jesus gives that great commandment, even in the New Testament, the the people, the, the Jewish people would have immediately went to Leviticus 
you know, yes. Leviticus, you know, um, uh, nine, I believe it is, ten through nineteen. They would immediately went to Deuteronomy and Deuteronomy and 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 talked about how literally God God literally gave them instructions. Says, listen, when you when you reap your harvest, even in your fields, when you reap your harvest, like leave a section open for the foreigner. Mm. You know, like don't even take uh, and don't take everything. Leave some open for someone else who will need it. Yeah, don't be so, greedy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so this God, like he's not bipolar. He's the same. He's the same one. And so he has this. He uh, and, and, and so what highlights that? What what's highlighted there for me is is that God does care about bro brotherhood. He does care about um, unity. And I've been reading. Um, I've been going back through. Um, the knowledge of the holy by aw tozer, tozer yeah right so i've been going back through that and so check this out literally on page one of his book check this out this is what he says this is what i mean when i'm cross-referencing right mm -hmm. so he says he says uh what comes to our minds when we think about god is the most important thing about us <laughs> he says the history of mankind will probably show that no people has ever risen above its religion and a man's spiritual history will pos positively demonstrate that no religion has ever been greater than its idea of God. Good night. Right? Then uh, it goes down a little bit. So that's like individual. Then it talks about it from a um, then it talks about it from a corporate perspective, right? Then he says, This is not just true of this is not just only true of the individual Christian, but of the company of Christians that composes the church. Oof. Always the most revealing thing about the church is her idea of God. Just as her most significant message is what he says about him, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, just as her, her, the church, most significant message is what she says about him or leaves unsaid. <laughs> For her silence is often more eloquent than her speech. She, she can never escape the self-disclosure of her witness concerning God. So I wanted to just like highlight that part because how we view God, right, or or how we view you know, how we view His nature, how we view what He cares about, will inform what we care about, what we care about. Mm. So mm. I think um, in a time like this, that's why it's so important. He is he's basically saying throughout this entire book, I care about justice, so you should. I care about you um, caring about your fellow mankind. So you should care about your fellow mankind. Yeah, I care about I, keeping my word, so you should care about keeping your word. Go ahead. Man, and no, you're nailing it. And I think uh -huh. one of the things that Tozer and that you've just brought out is what do we think about God? Yes. What is our idea of who God is? And I, I can't remember who said it, but somebody once told me that theology is thinking God's thoughts after him. And sometimes mm -hmm. what, I, what I'm worried about Ooh. is that we are thinking God's thoughts before him. And yes, then sir. we're saying, yo, God, we want your thoughts to follow in line with our thoughts. Yes. And so, and so what you just said and what Tozer is getting at uh, and what I think the prophet Amos is, is doing for us is saying we have to be aware mm -hmm. of who our God is and what his character and nature is. Um, but then, uh, KJ, I want you to unpack this, the individualism. Yes. Versus the corporate mentality. We talk about this a lot. Do yes. that for us. Why is that so important? Oh, my God. It's super, um, again, for the same reason. Um, I think I, I used to be really on the fence about this because I would see, um, you know, message. I, I, let me let me let me rewind. Let me rewind. Let me go back. You know, you know, a ten, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, there used to be uh, what you would call a prosperity gospel. Right. Where it's like God wants you to have the house. God wants you to have the car. God wants you to have the career. Um you know those things and so that was a thing and then nowadays that is generally frowned upon when you say it directly like the house <laughs> the car the job right so people kind of like uh i don't know about that buddy right but what it's turned into the new prosperity gospel go on is how god wants to do everything for you individually that it's go all on. about you right mm -hmm. it's all about you and and or or what it's turned into is okay what am I getting from this message? Like, how is this, how does this apply to me? Mm. Right. Versus versus. Okay, God, what is your plan? What is your story? And how do I fit into what you want to do? Oh. Not how, not how 
um, I can transaction transactionally like uh, use you to get what I want, right? Um, mm -hmm. which, is, which is super important. So again, this individualistic, yes, yes, God, um, he he saves us, right? He he's his okay. I put it like this: His blood in the cross is not just about our salvation, but it is also about giving us a new last name. Ooh. It's it's about it's about it's about it's about inviting us and adopting us into a new family, right? Yes. It's it's about it's about informing. It's not just it's not just to make you clean and say, "Oh, I'm blameless and I'm holy, I'm righteous because of what Jesus has done." Now it's saying. Now the point is, no, no, no. Holy actually means, like you mentioned earlier, to be set aside yeah. for a specific purpose. Mm. So he's saying, listen. I, I made you holy, not so you can say, "Woo, I got out of I got out of hell free card." You're right. Saying, I made you holy because there's somebody else that I also would like to save. There's somebody else that I would also um 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 like to bring um 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 my my joy, my light, um my love to to you know. Man. So so that's why it's so important for us to have um a correct um narrative. That this yes, we are a part of the story, but even even Joel, even when when people say like like I, my body is a temple, it's actually not your body is a temple. <laughs> our body, our body, our bodies. It's a second person temple, plural. Temple. Go on, Doc. Second person plural. Go on. There it is. There it is. I, okay, you know, let's let's use another example. Jesus said, "When you pray, pray like this: Our Father, who mm. are in heaven." Mm. Your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into mm -hmm. temptation. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So but deliver us from the evil one. Uh, deliver us from the evil. So so it's 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 and, and this and, and it's a Western thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a Western thing. Um, and and Eastern culture, they would have seen. Um, their life in Christ is something that is more um, communal. Communal, and so yeah. anyway, so so if God is trying to unite, a, if if His blood is not just about saving you, if His blood is about uniting a family, then that informs how you live, and then you don't just have tunnel vision of like, okay, I'm here today, and I just I'm here today at church, and I want to get my pick me up, which I think is like really powerful right now because now. People say all the time, yeah, it's not the building, it's the people that's the church. Mm -hmm. We say it all the time, mm -hmm. but now that we can't meet in the building, do we still understand that we have a job to do? Hey, let's go. Bro, so, I'll stop man, there for now. No, you, okay, so um, thank you. And I know everybody's like, keep going. So here's the deal. Uh, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm not, I wasn't going to say this, but I'm excited uh, for something that's coming up. Uh, that's going to have this type of conversation with another brother of ours. Uh, yeah. We might grab a sis as well, uh, but we're going to talk through the text. So, brother, I love you. Thank you, my love man. You too, man. Yeah, uh, and I'll talk to you soon. For sure. Peace. Um, I just want to unpack one of those things that, uh, that KJ uh, got to. Wendy, if you're on here, you can um, – jump on. I'm not sure if you're on still or not. Um, but one of the things that uh, you will find is that um, um, individualism, y'all, individualism is, um, it is suffocating the life of um, the believer because we've detached ourselves from the body of Christ. And we just can't do that. So I need to get Wendy on here because y'all, uh, Wendy is one of my uh, favorite Bible teachers of all time. Um, I like to think of her as a spiritual mother. Um, she is a mentor for me. Uh, there she is. Hey, hey Wendy. And, and, and we have been, Wendy and I have been together pretty much all day. <laughs> Like literally, we've been we've been working on our friend Lisa Turker's project, uh, and uh, Wendy is an author of many Bible studies. Um, but more than that, what I want y'all to know about Wendy is that she is a spiritual mother. Um, she has loved on me and my family and my boys. Uh, and one of the things that you can know about Wendy is that when she says she's going to pray for you, 
she is going to pray for you. Um, and I know I saw Bo on here, uh, her, her son, Bo and her husband, Monty, uh, and then their daughter just got married. And we just love, we just love the black family so much. And so, um, Wendy, I'm just curious as you have walked through, you've read, I know Amos, Amos one, um, I would just love to get your reactions from this passage uh, of scripture and from your kind of unique perspective as you've come to it. Um, you know, gosh, there were so many things. I took some notes, but it's, it's really interesting. I've read it in a, like a read through the Bible sense, but this really made me sit with the, the text for a long time and get my commentaries out. But I wanted to, I'm just going to go back to my initial, one of the initial things I loved was how the Lord was depicted as a roaring lion. Ooh, yeah. Um, and, and I think about, I remember when Bo was little and we talked about how, you know, it says the devil prowls around like a roaring lion. And I was like, you know, seeking to kill, steal, and destroy. But that's the picture that is being given here. And I remember once when we were at Disney World, and if Melissa Taylor's on here, yay Disney. But um, when, when, we're, when, we are, um, when we go through at the Animal Kingdom, we, we saw this lion, and they said they almost never roar, but every now and then, and it roared. And that was my first time to really hear a lion roar. And it was far away from us. And it was so loud. And I think about that, it, that it puts terror in, in your heart when you hear mm. that. And then that terror then basically can paralyze you for a moment. And so when I think that's what's going to happen with all these nations that, and especially when it comes to Judah and Israel, as we get in the next chapter, that this vision, he wants to terrify people. Amos wants people to be terrorized and fearful because this is this they had their chance and it's over like it's so done. when this is so good wendy i want to ask you a question about this though because i feel like what you just said is biblical truth but yet um i think we have i uh, know i have always pictured uh god um as loving and caring mm -hmm. and um, compassion, like all of these things. And yet the description that you just gave us um, is a God of justice. And so as you've studied the, the text, as, you, as you've been in his word, like how are we supposed to respond to this reality of this aspect of who God is? And how do we reconcile that with um, the, the other aspect of, of who he is? Because he is one God. He's not two different people. Right. And and if you look at the other, I'm just looking at all the images here. I see warrior. Yeah. I see the commander of heaven's armies who's coming after. I see the all-consuming fire because of how much fire is in here. And that fire, basically, you have beautiful, abundant land that's producing and it scorches it and it cracks the earth. I mean, everything about this is the part of God that we don't see very often in the New Testament. And it's why a lot of people don't want to read the Old Testament. But I think it's important because this is when it comes in for us to realize that our God is a holy God. Yeah. And I have to be honest, I don't think a lot about, I think of holy, set apart, set me apart in the world, but the holiness of God, this is what we should focus on more because this is what brings us down to that place of really worship. And we should be afraid of God, but not a terrorized, paralyzing fear. But um, when we look at, when, like when I look now at things that are not just around me, I feel like seeing God that way makes me more tender to want to fight for God in those situations. You know, not wow. fight people and not fight politicians and not fight but fight for with God to make things right the way he wants them to be, the way they're supposed to be and the way he made the world. Gosh. So, Wendy, as you've read this chapter and you've been through these uh, these books before, uh, in our ministry, Proverbs 31 Ministries, in the first five app, we taught through the book of Amos and all the, the, the minor prophets. Um, as you enter into this, I would just love for you to speak to our friends that are tuning in that maybe this is the very first time. Uh, that they have uh, even opened up this this uh, book of the Bible. The, I you know I had to look at the table of contents to see where the page number is. That's okay, um, but if you could give them one encouragement as a Bible teacher, as a friend, what would that be in order to help shape the way that they read these next nine chapters or eight chapters? Um, well, my my thing I always love to say is God's word that says. Well, first of all, we know right He wrote it for us. 
So that means he's enabling us to understand it. And the way I read the book of Amos when I was reading through my Bible, just in, the, you know, going through the Bible, I didn't have a lot of understanding. I, I didn't understand a lot of these things. And so I think read the, if it's your first time to go through, this is a whopper of a book to choose really, right? You know what I mean? But it doesn't matter because um, God meets you. He gives us his Holy Spirit who helps us understand what we're reading. And then we come here and we show up and you help us. And then the promise he gives that when the word goes out, God says, when my word goes out, this is, he's talking to Isaiah, I think when he says this, but it's going to accomplish his purposes. It's going to achieve what he desires. And, and we can claim that for ourselves. He's yeah. going to teach us what he needs to teach us now. And it's going to be valuable wherever we are on all different levels. It's a living and active word. And it speaks to us right where we are. It doesn't matter if we've been to theology or it's the very first time we're reading it. And I just want to emphasize what Wendy has just said, because I know sometimes um, it can be easy to look and, and feel like, gosh, the scriptures are daunting. And I didn't know all this historical context. And I didn't know about uh, Amos as a shepherd and, and all of this other stuff. Um, I just want you all to know, and this is one of the things that Wendy has taught me, is that um, God honors our our humble and passionate pursuit of his word. Uh, and he's going to give us the grace that we need in order to glean the truth because we have the spirit of God that indwells inside of us. And that is really um, the passion behind why uh, I wanted to do this Amos in Action study um, because it's something where it's like, man, it's you and the text and the Holy Spirit uh, and, and just diving in. Uh, Wendy, would you close this out by praying for us and for the next nine weeks, specifically because I know that we're excited on week one. Uh, then week two is going to hit and week three and, and it's going to feel daunting. Would you just pray for us that we would have the endurance uh, by the power of the spirit uh, to see this through and also for like how we're being formed into a type of people and everything else that's on your heart to pray for us for. And can I just say that you kind of really want to finish because the best is yet to come, you know, yeah. in this book, like when we get to the end, it's going to be glorious. So don't yes. miss, miss to the end. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, Heavenly Father, um, all-consuming fire is who you are. You are a mighty warrior. Thank you that the battles we fight are yours, Lord. Um, and although you are a mighty, holy God, you are also, um, then one of the names you give us is Abba Father. And Father, you created us in your image. We are your Im image bearers. And you sent us to this earth, Father, to be kingdom ambassadors, to be your ambassadors on this earth, Father, to bring heaven to earth, to bring heaven to earth, to show people who you are, your love and your peace and your joy and your hope. And Father, so as we um, think about what we do on this earth, I love the picture that we are temples of your Holy Spirit. God, a long time ago in the Old Testament, there was the big temple, you know, but now we are your temple. Scripture teaches us that your Holy Spirit lives in us and you fill us with your fruit. So God, I ask you as we continue in this study, as we read your word, first of all, Father, just um, give us the wisdom and knowledge and discernment and understanding to understand it right where we are. And I just speak against the enemy who would want us to give up and to think we're not smart enough and we can't mm. do this, Father. We are because you've given us the mind of Christ. And Father, I just pray that you would open our eyes around us. I pray, ask you this week for every single person listening, every person listening, would you put someone across our path for the opportunity to love them, to serve them, to, um, to help them in some way? Maybe it's someone we need to forgive, but would you give us an opportunity? Would you send us out this week with eyes to see and a heart to receive what you would have us to do and to be bold and to be courageous in doing it, Father? We are your ambassadors. We love you so much. Use us, Father, for your glory, but also that I just picture um, you looking down from heaven and seeing all of us seeking to come together as one brotherhood and sisterhood to just be your little light shining all over the world and doing great things for the kingdom, even if they're small, Father, that we are loving other people. And bring us back together next week, hungry to learn more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. See, you, see you tomorrow. <laughs> um, man, I just want to encourage y'all. 
to um, dig in. Um, we'll see you next week, Thursday. Uh, I'll let you know what time, probably between six and seven uh, Eastern. And um, share this with your friends and get into the word. And I trust that God will meet you there. Love y'all. Catch you later.